everyone and welcome back to another episode of Artist Conversations. Um, each week we get up close and personal with an artist and we learn all about their stories and all about their craft. Um, this week we are delighted to have with us all the way from Oxford, Ellie Walker. Hey Ellie! Um, Ellie is an illustrator and graphic designer. Her designs celebrate the interconnections between food, lifestyle and poetry, and her style is organic, optimistic and full of vitality. Um, I first met Ellie at university where she studied illustration and we, she later went on to complete her MA in Amsterdam. So um, hello Ellie, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, can you tell us a bit more about yourself? Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, so um, I am an illustrator and if I'm honest, um, I've always found it a little bit hard to define how I describe my artistic practice because I, I cross a few boundaries. So I work, I do some graphic design work, um, I do some illustration work and I'm always experimenting. I'm, I'm very much a kind of experimental creative. Um, but yeah, I've, uh, I've always had a kind of passion for making and um, particularly for drawing. So I, I've had um, in the past different stints experimenting with photography and with graphic design and with um, painting. But for me, drawing is kind of like the, the thing that I'm most uh default to um so yeah i have been working as an illustrator for um probably about five years now professionally um and i'm always uh exploring new avenues and um yeah great can you tell us a bit about where you get your inspiration from ellie sure so um so one of my main um, points of inspiration is actually the written word and I particularly love poetry and for me when I'm reading um, poetry sometimes I see um, visuals kind of forming in my head and I just find it a real fruitful starting point for inspiration. So I'm just going to show you a few pieces of artwork as I, as I speak um, and this piece for example was inspired by um, a poem by classic poem, uh, classic poem actually by Yeats, the Lake Isle of Innisfree, and um, it's quite abstract. But for me, I feel like this um, really conjured a sort of sense of atmosphere that was in the poem, um, of of the kind of soothing um, tone of the poem, and and it, often poetry kind of helps me to be quite free and creative with my with my art artistic practice um, so here is another piece which was inspired by the written word so this was actually um, based on a text from a book called um, Gone to Earth by a lady called Mary Webb and um, she lived in the region that I grew up in which is in the borderland between England and Wales and it's very kind of wild and um, yeah very beautiful and, and this was inspired by sort of history and um, humanity and um, nature. So, uh, so poetry is quite a big inspiration for me. Um, another inspiration that's quite major is um, trying to capture these precious moments in life um, through um, in relation to kind of uh, friendship and family and also food. So <laughs> quite a lot of my work does actually um, depict people sharing food, um, gathering together, and um, for me, I, I'm inspired by that because I just love to kind of remember those things. And I think a lot of um, my inspiration does connect with memory and, and joy and trying to capture these uh, moments in life, which are really precious. So here's one of, uh, yeah, some uh, kind of coffee, coffee date sort of scene. And then here's another one. It's called August, which is um, a screen print based on um, sort of dinner party. Um, so yeah, these are my major points of inspiration. Yeah, beautiful illustration as well. And what, what's that creative process like? From you know when you see a poem and then you mm. transpose it onto onto 
onto an illustration? What, what's that process like? Mm. Yeah, normally it, it, it starts with um, being really immersed in, in that inspiration. So making sure there's not any other distraction. And sometimes there's just moments where you just feel really inspired and my mind just comes up with ideas. So then I start sketching them down. I, I always work very closely with a sketchbook um, and I have just tons of sketchbooks, <laughs> which are like my absolute precious belongings really because they've, they've got all my ideas in. And so I start kind of doing some drawings and practicing. And then I start to build compositions um, through drawing. And then usually it, it depends on what, what, I, what idea I have in mind for the output. So um, sometimes that's a, a digital illustration. Um, sometimes that might be a screen print or some sort of, you know, um, printing process, which I can tell you more about later if you like, but it's, it's uh, something I love to do. So normally the next stage is I would um, create a composition on Photoshop and then I would uh, complete the image there um, or, or then print it onto um, a screen to do a, a, a print, screen print or something. Um, but yeah, it usually goes through these different stages for me. So the drawing, the Photoshop, where I play, I just play with composition. Um, Great. And what would you say is, you know, the thing about illustration that you find most fascinating that first drew you to it? Yeah, I think it was a natural, um, I was naturally drawn to illustration because of the relationship between illustration and the written word. And uh, I've always been a reader. And like I said, I find a lot of inspiration in that. So um, illustration and um, yeah, illustration is really where art meets the word, the written word. And um, there's, you know, traditionally uh, illustration seems to start with books, children's books, um, printed illustrations within books, um, book covers. And uh, when I was at university and I said, and people asked me what I studied and I said illustration, people would very often their reaction would be, oh, do you do children's books? Um, so yeah, it, illustration, I mean, I don't really do children's books actually, there's a lot more to illustration than that, but um, it does indicate that that's where those two worlds meet and so that's what really drew me to it because I loved, I loved reading and I loved drawing, so um, yeah, that's where they came together, yeah. Right, yeah, it's really interesting because I come from a literary background so it's interesting to see you know, your interpretation of poetry and how you kind of give, give it a visual um, yeah. partner to, to, to a poem. Do you, would you ever try writing poetry, do you think? Yeah, that's a good question. I have, I have tried. I don't think I have a lot of skill in it. <laughs> um, and I have sometimes tried to write down kind of my observations um, and form poetry, but sometimes I think I think it, it rarely turns into like a well-structured poem, <laughs> I think, because I lack the, the technical ability to, to write poetry, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I try to channel it into drawings, honestly. I think when I have tried to create um, poetry, I've, I've tried to think, OK, how would this look visually if I could translate this, these ideas that are going on into my head that I'm trying to express? I find it much more comfortable to express them visually. Mm, yeah. yeah. And you mentioned, you know, that you get quite inspired by people and food and you've lived in Edinburgh and Amsterdam and now Oxford. Do you think that, you know, all of those different cultures, those peoples shaped your experience as an artist or your approach to your art? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. I think in all of those places I spent a lot of time absorbing um, inspiration. I think all three of those places are a very, they're very culturally rich and, and very um, inspiring. And I think it's, it's both the combination of the other people who are attracted to that place, who are, are often um, maybe attracted to the culture, um, and also all the artistic, uh, 
possibilities that are available in those places I, I found really rich for inspiration um yeah I, I I think my work is not directly related to location I think as in I don't necessarily always say do landscape sort of illustrations but I have sometimes done that um, so I think it, it is clear that I've lived in some of these places from my artwork. Um, but yeah, they've definitely had a sort of secondary inspiration, like a secondary effect on my work in the sense that I've filled up with lots of inspiration in these like wonderful places that I've been lucky enough to live in. Um, and they've really fed, fed me mm -hmm. creatively, yeah. And what would you say would be the most rewarding part of your journey so far? Mm. Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Um, I think what what is really it is really rewarding seeing other people's reactions to my work, and I I haven't had any um, exhibitions in the last year, but uh, a couple of years ago I had a couple of exhibitions um, in Edinburgh and in Newcastle in North of England, and. Um, I find it really fascinating and rewarding to see how people receive my work because sometimes the way they um, interpret it is not necessarily what I had in mind. But when I think when an artist reveals their work in the public realm, it it's a sort of sense of letting go. I, as the artist, have to kind of accept that it's now view it now belongs to the river and however they interpret it is is like personal to them and I can't control the way they view it and how it speaks to them but I actually find that kind of mysterious process of being of it of my work being interpreted differently to perhaps how I created it really beautiful and um and really special and yeah I remember having um, an exhibition in Edinburgh and just standing near my work and they the viewers who were viewing my work didn't necessarily know that I was the artist but I was just listening to their conversation and and uh, I just loved to to hear their reactions to it um, so I think that is one of the most rewarding parts of the process um, is is that kind of uh, yeah transition from it being yours as the artist my work only I've seen it to it being the viewers. Yeah, that's very special. It's almost a conversation, isn't it? It's like yeah. saying something and then they interpret, you know, the, it can speak to, to different people in so many ways. Is that yeah. special? Yeah, yeah. I remember you mentioned you were a Christian as well. Do you think your faith has kind of changed your approach to your art as well? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think in, I think, Indirectly, certainly, um, there's a lot of um, kind of emphasis on beauty, I think, in, in the Christian faith and in the Bible. Uh, for example, at the very beginning of the Bible, the very well-known creation story, God said, it is good. And he was, he, he sort of had a great kind of love of beauty and of, of um of what had been created and so I think this sort of sense of it's okay to just appreciate and love beauty um, is something which has probably had an effect on, on me as an artist and then another aspect of that is just the, the, the poetry in the Bible I find really it's inspiring because it's it's kind of a timeless text it's sort of ancient and yet really present and really kind of modern day um as well and there's just so much like beautiful poetry in it and so some of my work has been inspired by that directly as well so i can just show you an image again if you like um, so i'll just show you this image which was um inspired by a passage in the bible um, just a single passage of poetry um, from Psalm 56 verse 8 which said you you hold all my tears in your bottle 
um, and it's sort of a piece about grief, um, but it's also a piece about comfort. And I think that the words in the Bible can kind of trans transcend the um, regular um, mundane day-to-day -day, um, sort of experience of life and, and kind of capture some of the more deeper feelings um, or spiritual uh, experiences. And that's why I find the words in the Bible a really inspiring source of uh, content to create uh, work from. Thank so, you. Yeah. Verses, actually. It's such a, such a beautiful verse and the way you've sort of brought it to life with your illustration as well. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Lastly, I wondered if you had any words of advice for other aspiring young artists. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I would say uh, actually that we live in a kind of a moment of time where there's it's absolutely saturated with inspiration. And in some ways, I think that's great. But in some ways, I think that can be really distracting. And so I think my advice would be to any any um, budding artists or um, young people who are inspired to to be an artist in, in their lives. I would say get off Pinterest for a while. <laughs> um, don't, don't get all of your inspiration from Pinterest, from this kind of big, um, or from Instagram, for example, this big world of, of busyness, which is the internet. And I would say kind of switch off and, and look a bit deeper um, at, your, at the things that inspire you and let that inspire you because that will be more intuitive, more personal, um, have more depth and I think it will ultimately inspire better work um, and I think another bit of advice would be don't um, feel like you have to brand yourself mm. I think another aspect of um, being an artist or a creative in this world is that um, you know people feel like they have to um, make themselves sellable and i think that is really crucial but if you if that is your 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 main source of money but i think um it can be dangerous as well because it can sometimes choke out the real um authentic artistic voice in you yeah. so um yeah basically you've probably heard it before but be true to yourself find inspiration that's true to you um yeah that would be my advice Thank you so much. That's great um, words of advice. Well, thank you so much for this lovely interview. Um, for our viewers back home, um, if you'd like to check out more of Ellie's work, um, I've got them in the links below, so please go check them out. Um, thank you so much, Ellie. It was really good to see you. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. You're strong. You're strong.